Okay, so this is the login page for the learning management system. All learners will log in through this page and um, all the learners will log in using their email address and uh, whatever password has been sent to them. And during the initial setup process, there is an email that is sent out to users. And um, so if they click on that email, they'll be taken to a registration page where they should reset their password. Um, but once that's reset, they will be able to log in through this page. And users can also retrieve their password by clicking on the forgot password link. Um, all they'll have to do is enter their username or email address, and that information should be the same. And assuming that they're in the system and that their email address is correct, they should be able to reset their password uh, themselves. And it will email a reset password link to their email. And so they can um, reset their password themselves. There's another login um, for administrators. And you can feel free to bookmark this page. It's basically the same address, but just with admin on the end. And so the difference between these two pages, admin will take you into the admin section of the portal. And this page will take you into the learner section of the portal. If you're not an administrator, you will not be able to log in through the admin area. So, We'll go ahead and click login. And this will take me to the welcome page of the site. And you'll see that I have your logo up. And I did alter your logo a little. Um, the logo that was sent to me was a vertical logo. And I kind of moved City of Lethbridge over to the right of the logo. If this isn't, isn't something that is allowed, please let me know and I can change it. But we have a very limited height. Uh, within this window for me to add a logo. So um, also I can edit the design of this site. So if you decide you want another image or any new images other than what's being displayed, just send those images to me or reach out to me and I'll give you what dimensions are required. And then you can send me that information and I'll get that updated within the system. And we can also update colors as well. So if you don't like any of the colors you see, just let me know. So in addition to, um, to what we see here, there are um, courses that are going to be listed. As a default, uh, whenever a user first logs in, the courses that are available for self-registration are going to show under the catalog row. And this is going to be defined um, by, actually these were defined by Tracy Brayson. He actually asked me to um, allow these courses for self-enrollment. And I did have a discussion with someone last week in reference to making all of the courses available for self-enrollment. So if everyone concurs with that, then I will go ahead and make all of the training available for self-enrollment. And all that means is that a user can search for training and enroll themselves into the training. So there's a couple of ways that I can search for training. I can use the search field at the top and enter in keyword or phrase, and it will um, return the results on the search results page. As I said, catalog is going to be any training that's available for self-enrollment. If I click on catalog, it'll take me to the catalog page. And depending on how you have this laid out, it may show categories or, um, and you can turn these categories on or off. And that will affect how items are displayed. And I can also use the search field on the left to search for um, specific terms or course numbers. And I can also um, define how I want this to be displayed just by selecting this drop down on the right. And I can enroll myself into a course just by clicking the enroll button and then click start. And then it will open the course, um, open the course for me. 
and the, the courses will open up in a pop-up. So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, if your user says, all I see is a gray background whenever I open up the course, it probably means that the course is being blocked by a pop-up blocker and they'll have to allow pop-ups on the site for the courses to open. And the status of the courses is going to change based upon um, where the user is in the course. So for example, this user has started the course, but they have not completed it. So uh, the button says resume. If I go back to the welcome page, I have a new row and two new rows. One is my courses and the other one is resume courses. So um, my courses are going to be courses that the user has enrolled themselves into or that someone else has enrolled that user into. Resume courses is going to display courses that the user has started but not finished. And just going over some of the items we have on the right navigation. Um, if we look at this, we have catalog. This is going to take us back to the catalog page we were on before, where um, the user can um, browse items that they can enroll themselves into. And um, my courses, again, this is going to have courses that the user has uh, been enrolled into or um, that they've enrolled themselves into. And the user can also edit their information. So if they click on the profile icon, um, they can change their password. And if they click edit profile, there are certain items which they can fill in, such as they can enter their phone number, their address, um, but they cannot edit certain information such as their user ID, first name, or last name. So like I said, this is where a user would change their password. They would enter their current password and select a new password and click save. A couple other items that we have, a calendar. The calendar is going to display any items that have a due date associated. And it's also going to display instructor-led training. So if you're managing instructor-led training or due dates with any of your training, those due dates will display on the calendar. So I've unmuted. Are there any uh, questions so far that we have about the learner side of the learning management system? Okay. So moving on to the admin area, uh, like there are a couple of ways we can reach the admin side. From the drop down, we can select the admin link. And only administrators will have this admin link. Um, so we can reach the admin side by clicking on the admin link or by logging in through the admin page. So um, then there's also a learner side link, and this will take me back to the learner side and admin link. And I can also get to the learner side by this uh, drop down where it says learner experience. And that will take me uh, back to the learner side. So this is the admin area for the learning management system. And just some of the first things that you'll see are um, the dashboards. And the dashboards are going to have items such as activity, any reports you've generated, any messages in the system, any reports that you have saved. And I will show you how to save reports. The nice thing about saved reports is that whenever you log into the system, you can simply go to the page and click on the report and it will take you to that report. The learners tab is going to have all your learner information. So um, you have 85 users in the system. That includes me, I have myself set up as a demo, so you actually have 84 users. And there are also, um, this is going to show you the top five learners in the last 30 days. And it looks like Mike um, Gorowski is uh, number one. And also the 10 most recent completions. Courses is going to show the most popular courses in the system right now. So 
So it's all pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory. All of these items are static, which means they cannot be edited. Um, Absorb is working on the um, ability to have these pages customizable. So something to look forward to down the road. And just to look at the navigation for the admin area, we have courses, users, and reports. Those are going to be the three main areas. And each one of these pages, so if we go to the courses pages, this is essentially a course layout. Um, so all of the reports are going to have this exact same layout. Um, the user page is going to have the same layout. And any of the report pages are going to have the same layout. And one of the main positives for that is that you don't have to learn how to manage information on each one of these pages. You'll manage information the same way throughout the site. So um, what are the, some of the ways this information can be managed? I'm actually going to delete this uh, template. So this is what you'll see whenever you come to this page. And you can add columns to this report. So if, for example, I want to see the date this training was added, how many credits this training has, who created the training, um, then I can add these columns to the report. And then if there's a layout that I want to save, all I have to do is click create new layout. Name it, and now this is um, a saved report. If I want this report to show up every time I come to this page, I click the star, and now anytime I come to this page, this layout is going to automatically be loaded to this page. Now, some of the things that we can do with this information is um, filter the information. Each one of these columns has the ability to be filtered. And so you have this filter icon at the top of the column. So if I click on filter, it's going to already automatically add it to name. And let's say I want to search for uh, 101. So I'm going to click add filter and nothing's coming up. So if I read, if I take another look at this filter, um, the modifier is starts with. So if I change this to contains, then any title that contains 101 is going to appear under this filter. And the same goes for courses too, or actually for users. So if I click on the users tab, like all of the users are going to be listed in the system. There aren't any filters applied to this page yet. Um, so if I want to, Actually, if I want to add other items such as date added, um, if I want to see, um, is this user an administrator? If I want to see the number of logins. Um, this is information that um, I can set. So I'll go ahead and save this report. And I'll favorite this report or star the report. So um, if I want to create a filter, uh, for is admin, I think I added that, but I do not see it. So I'll select is admin, and I'll create a filter, and we'll select yes and add filter, and then now all of my administrators are showing up. So I can save another report and click this plus sign, and we'll say my Lethridge.
And so now I have all my administrators on one page. And you can actually see um, how many times each administrator has logged in. And if I want to switch back to my other report, then I just select that report from the drop down. So looking at some of the information that we can manage on this page with individual users, if I click on a user, um, there's going to be actions that are going to appear. And actually, if I go back to the courses page and click on a course, actions are going to appear. And so the actions are going to change based upon the number of um, courses that I have picked. So if I select multiple courses, then this is going to be a bulk action or a mass action. And the only action associated with multiple courses is going to be enroll users. And this will allow me to select users in the system. And if I click enroll, then it would enroll those users into that training. So going back to the users page, it's the same idea. So if I click on more than one user, then my actions are going to change as well. And I can select several users and then click enroll users and then select the training that I want to enroll the users into. And one thing that's important, if we come to this page, there's a lot of information that's on this page. Um, you wanna focus on the city of Lethbridge, that's where all your training is going to be located. And there's one thing that I wanna point out, and one thing that I want to stress is do not, I recommend not clicking this box next to the city of Lethbridge because this is gonna force the system to select every piece of training that's available. And sometimes that will freeze up the system depending on your internet speed and your um, computer capabilities. So click the arrow next to city of Lethbridge and then you can select the individual courses that you want to assign. So one other thing I want to point out is, um, so we're looking at, like going back to the courses page, we also have the ability to select type. And so if I select uh, curriculum and add filter, and this is going to display the curricula that are in the system. And if I want to edit that curriculum, I click edit and it will take me um, into the edit tool for that curriculum. I'm going to show you how to build a curriculum next. Um, I do want to show you one more thing on the user page. Um, so Clicking on an individual will allow you to um, edit a user, and this will allow you to edit their information, reset their password. And you can also edit any account details. So I do wanna show you how to create a curriculum. So curriculums are going to be created from the courses page. And from this drop down menu, um, you click curriculum or add new curriculum. And this is also available on the right here. So I'm going to call this tool safety. And for category, I'm going to select city of Lethbridge. And that's all the information that you have to select on this page. If you have a special thumbnail that you want to associate with this um, training, then you can upload that as well and associate it with the curriculum. Courses is where I'll build the curriculum. Um, so if you have a long curriculum, you might think about how you want to organize that. Um, the system allows you to group training within the curriculum. So um, we can add additional groups in which we can organize that training. Um, I'm going to have two groups. I'm going to call this basic safety. And then I'm going to add the sec second group and call it tools. If we click on add courses and I'm going to search for the keyword safety. 
and then safety courses are going to come come up or anything that has the um, term safety in the title is going to come up and I can just select those courses click continue and those courses have been added to my curriculum you don't necessarily have to go down to city of Lethbridge and click this um, little drop down to select the courses you want you can select a term at the top and um, it will appear it'll show courses with um, whatever search phrase is in the title. And you can move this training around. You see the little dots to the left of the title that um, if you drag those, it'll let you move the training around. You can move training into another section. And we can also define uh, minimum, Actually, we can set the what's called pace progress. And this is going to force users to complete training in a different order. So, or a specific order. So if we select pace progress, it's going to require the users complete the training in the first group before they can proceed to the training in the second group. And if we set minimum courses, so for example, we set this to four, and four, this is going to let the user proceed to the second group after they have completed four um, pieces of training within this curriculum or within this group. But I do want to point out that these restrictions are only going to be in effect when the user is inside the curriculum. So for example, if you have the individual course hearing and noise safety available for self-enrollment, the user can search for that course outside of this curriculum and complete that training. Um, the individual course will not associate with the completion requirements within a curriculum. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. And just a quick um, regards to the calendar, if you wanted to use the calendar to assign the uh, courses, say one per week or something like that, is that easily done? Um, well, you could, um, essentially you could create a curriculum and then you could define when that curriculum would be assigned and then you can set renewals for that curriculum, but it would be, um, it, it would be up to you as to whether or not you wanted to um, create that level of work. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking for something simple, like if you assign 15 courses to a group uh, all at once, it would they'd all be on the calendar for every day of the year, I guess, or how would that work? I'm not sure I understand. So, you want something on the calendar for every day of the year? Well, no, I'm just kind of trying to think of a scenario. You showed the calendar. How do we get uh, a course to show up on that calendar? And, and I suppose uh, so that just got to guide the trainee on what stuff to be working on first. Sure. For each month, for example. Yeah, let me show you. I'll, I'll show you how to add, a, add completion requirements to this curriculum. And then I'll assign it to myself and we'll, I'll show you what it looks like on the, on the calendar. Okay, so I've created the training items for the curriculum. The next thing we do is set availability. Availability is going to determine whether or not this can be searched for or if it's going to be automatically assigned to users. So if we want users to be able to search for this training, then we can set the um, self-enrollment role. So um, this self-enrollment role is set to the city of Lethbridge, that means this curriculum is going to appear in the catalog so any users can enroll themselves into this training. Um, if you want to kind of limit that ability to the administrators so they can assign this training to their users, then I would not recommend um, setting allow self-enrollment. 
unless you are going to utilize something like job title, if you had users in the system that had a specific job title, then you could um, set what that job title is. And this catalog would appear to users that have that job title on the system. A couple of things that, um, that I wanna show you as well, expiration and due date. So if we say due date is going to be, this is going to be due one month from enrollment. And we can also set a specific date. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to have one month from enrollment. And you also have to set the um, course visibility. So we add the department visibility. This is going to be, uh, this is going to limit this, or restrict this curriculum to only showing up to administrators that are with the city of Lethbridge. So if you create a curriculum within the system and you do not set this, then potentially any administrator from any other company is going to be able to see this training. Um, they would not be able to see the courses within it because those are locked, already locked down to the city of Lethbridge. And I do go through and I try to audit this and make sure that, um, that these restrictions are being applied whenever training is created, but just something to keep in mind. And also if you create a curriculum and you do not want anyone else to be able to edit your curriculum then you would define yourself as an editor and that's going to restrict other people from editing this curriculum so that means you are the only person that can edit this curriculum so i'm going to move this restriction and i'm also going to leave this available in the system so um, you can use this as a reference. I'm going to call this test as well. Um, completion. So if we want to create a certification associated with this training, we can do that as well. Um, and we can say that, say for one year, this is going to be a one year certification so after one year the user will have to complete this training again and we can also define how the re-enrollment will occur whenever the user has to complete this training again so we could say one month before uh, the certificate expires the user is going to automatically be re-enrolled into this training and then emails will be sent to the user to let them know that they've been re-enrolled into the training And messages, um, this is where we turn on messages for uh, the training. Messages are automatically turned on by default. So if you create training in the system and you do not want emails to go out, then just turn this off. Um, you have the ability to edit the email. So for this enrollment email, you can edit this information within this email and these are tags that uh, will show up in the email. If you want a copy of this to be sent to administrators, then you would click this on. And then anytime this um, enrollment email is sent to a user, then an administrator will receive a copy. So um, the same for completion emails. Resources will be anything that you want to attach to the training. So for example, if you have um, something like a new employee training and you want that training to um, have an attachment, let's say something like a new employee workbook, then you could add this resource to the training. We'll just call this new employee workbook. And then we would search for the, for the file and attach that file to the training.
So just to run through, I have the course set up with the title. I have my training set up and I'm going to turn off pace progress for this and change this back to five and five. Availability, this is not set for self-enrollment for any users. Um, completion, there is a certification that's associated with this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disassociate that certification. And messages are turned on for this training. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to assign this training to myself. So uh, there's a couple of ways that I can search for this training. Um, I can search for the title and that had tools in it. Actually, I think it just had tool safety, contains, add filter. And this is the curriculum that I've created. So if I click enroll users on the right and then search for my name and click enroll, uh, then that training has now been enrolled um, to myself. And if I go back to the learner side, And now that training is assigned and you'll see there's a due date and it's one month from the date it's assigned. And if I go to my calendar, um, that item is appearing on my calendar now. And also the training item appears under the calendar. So I can click resume. And I can um, take my training. So any questions? Did that kind of answer your question? Yeah, it did, yeah. Okay, great. Now I only recommend associating um, training, training requirements with curriculum. So for example, you have all of these courses and if you go to edit a course, you'll see that you have basically the same options to edit these courses. These are set to probably the most universal um, settings for the system. We do not have emails turned on because if you have 10 individual courses set in a curriculum, you don't want the user to receive 10 individual emails. Um, and that's the reason why we have emails turned off for these individual courses. Um, also availability, like I said, um, a lot of these courses have the self-enrollment rule set up for just a select number of courses. And that is something that I can set up for all the courses. So before I end the call, we'll determine whether or not we want that um, to occur. But I do not recommend placing any requirements on any of this training. If there's something that you want to change to the way these um, courses work within the system. If you let me know, I can run a process which will back, batch process these changes to all of the training items. There are close to 600 courses within the system, and I certainly wouldn't want you to have to update those individually. So, um, so my point is, anytime you want to create a special rule for a piece of training, I recommend creating a curriculum. And there are other training items that you could create, such as um, a course bundle. A course bundle is going to be a grouping of training. And so you would select the details, the individual courses, and define the availability. Um, so there really aren't any due dates associated with this. Um, so I really recommend if you're going to group training together, use curriculum. Instructor-led training, if you decided you wanted to manage instructor-led training within the system, that, that is something that um, we could get together and have a, a training call in the future, but it would be a little too, um, too deep to get into at this time. 
and also importing courses. So if you have courses from outside providers, those can be imported into Absorb and you can manage that training here. Again, if that's something that you decide you want to utilize, we can have another training call on how to um, implement those courses into Absorb. Um, just some other options with online courses. Um, just to review some of the items that we have, we have an object, learning object, so, or an object type course, which would be like a PDF. So if you wanted to associate a PDF with a course, and then this is where you would do that. And the same goes for video. A task would be something that you would require the user to complete. It would be sort of like an on-the-job training item. Um, assessment would allow you to build a test within the learning management system. And each one of these items would require additional training. So if you decided that you wanted to utilize some of these pieces, this is something that we uh, could schedule another training for. So um, a couple of other items that I want to show you if you, um, if you decide that you want to add if you decide you want to create other departments, so for example, um, let's say you want to create a department under City of Lethbridge to help organize other employees, we could call this um, we call this the safety department and click save. If we go to um, users, we select users, and click change department. Then we could click the safety department and then it sets and it will move those users to that department. And one thing that you want to, want to make sure of is as administrators, um, if you are going to utilize other departments then you want to make sure that um, you have the rights as administrator to man manage those sub-departments. So if we go to edit user, um, the admin restrictions are going to say and sub-departments of City of Lethbridge. That means that this administrator is going to be able to be administrator for the City of Lethbridge and all the sub-departments. If you want to limit the rights of an administrator to let's say only safety, then you would change this to um, department is only safety. And that's going to limit that um, admin's roles to only that department. And one thing I wanna to touch on is um, reports. Reports are uh, pretty obvious on how they're organized and we pretty much covered a lot of the reports in the system already. And, um, or the way that they can be managed. So you can add columns to this, these reports. You can save the layouts. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of completions that have occurred within the system. So we can't really, it's not really effective for me to show how the reporting system works. Um, one thing that um, if you want to have more training on reports after you have some more information in the system, then please let me know. So um, this is gonna show the users that are enrolled in the training, um, who started, and who is in progress. So some of the statuses to note, um, in progress means the user has started but not completed. Not started obviously means they have not started and completed means that they've completed all of the training. 
So one of the, um, let's see, there was something else I wanted to show you before we ended our call. You can create special groups for users. So if you have, um, let's say you have a group of new hires that started in January and you wanted to create a special group for those users, you could select those users and click create group. And then you could create the, or add the title for the group. And I recommend adding some type of identifier whenever you create a group. Um, just because whenever groups are created, they're going to go into a pool, a user pool. So if I click on the groups, this is going to show all the groups that are in the system. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to limit this where you can only see your groups. But the benefit of using groups is whenever you create a course and or whenever you create a curriculum, let's say for example, I want to um, create an automatic enrollment rule for a group and then I uh, select the group that I want um, these users to automatically be enrolled in this training, then this is where I would select that group. And there are different types of um, filters that you can have for automatic enrollment. So for date hired, if we say we want every user that was hired after January 1st to automatically be enrolled into this training, then um, we can set that here as well. So um, going back to users, some of the other items that I want to show you in terms of editing information for users. Um, right now, there are no supervisors set for users. So if you want to define um, a supervisor for a specific user, this is where you would set that. Um, there are job titles that are utilized within the system. So um, if we go back to our user page, we can add a job title to to this report. And then if I save my report, every time I come to this page, it's going to show the job titles. So we have five minutes left. Is there, are there any questions or anything that you would like me to review further? Dusty, I, I've got a question. This is Stu Perkus. Hi, Stu. So you, you've gone over a lot of the administration roles and, and actually talked about a way to pull information into the learning management system. And I'm just wondering from your other users, do any of your other users use this tool as a spot to house safe work procedures particular to their company and track people's, um, ha have they picked the safe work procedure up? Have they read it? Perhaps we, we have a small quiz about it. Are you ingesting data like safe work procedures to, to manage those things under your tool? And what would the format of the safe work procedures be in? PDF. PDF, sure. You could certainly create um, a training item for that. What I would do is um, create a course with the object object type course, which would allow you, and I could spend more time with you and training you on this, but add an object and then um, you link to the PDF. And then we have, um, so we have created that type of learning object in the system, which can be assigned to users. Um, and then we could also create an assessment. So you could test the user's knowledge with regards to that specific topic. And again, we would add another online course and this type of course would be an assessment. And this would allow us to um, create questions 
and we can define, um, we can group the questions, create the questions, we can set certain requirements on how this test is going to perform, like will the user have multiple attempts, you know, what will the passing score be, Okay. Time. So there's a lot of options and we, and we do have a lot of users that use this assessment tool. So you can build your own training program. And what you would do is you would build this and I would recommend building this into a curriculum where you would have the PDF in one group and have that kind of a pace progress where you have to view the PDF before you can have access to the test, which will be in the second group. Okay. So we can talk about more more about that internally because right now all of our safety documentation tends to be rooted in a server where you need to know the path to get there. Mm -hmm. And I think for our users, we need to find a better way of exposing those standards to them. And we may want to think about how do we ensure that they've read it? How do we ensure that they understand it? How do we keep track of the fact that they've done that and at what time and what day? Um, so I, I think these will be more topics for Bill um, as the administrator of our overall safety program. But I, I see this as potentially being waived because now a user would really only need um, to have internet access and be able to come in and they'd be able to look at those safety standards on a tablet, on a phone, on whatever type of device they have with them. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I apologize. I've got to step out because I got a meeting that starts at two. So Thanks, and I'll catch up with the other guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions that I can um, help with? Anything you'd like me to review again? Do most of the I think the biggest. Go, go ahead. Yeah, it's Tracy here. Um, just to, just because it's the second time I went through the system, haven't seen it before, but. Uh, it's a little bit overwhelming. You, you flip around the screen pretty fast. I'm just wondering, is there any type of training tutorials or a YouTube or any type of document that we can uh, look at if we just want to kind of get refresher reminders? Yes, there are, I'm glad you asked that. There are a couple of different resources that will be available. Um, actually, four resources that I'm going to show you. The first one is this um, Absorb Assistant. So with regards to onboarding, if you select onboarding and let's say how, um, how to create a department, for example, you say, take me there and it's going to walk you through the process of that task, completing that task. Another option is going to be um, the Absorb Academy. So this is going to be in the top right menu under help and click Absorb Academy. And this is going to reroute you to the Absorb Academy where there are tutorials available for administrators. So for example, um, you'll see under my courses, there's um, Absorb LMS admin training. And there's going to be several courses that will be available. And so you just enroll into the course and so this is the instructor report. Um, so let's look at navigating users. And so these are courses that are available. I, I recommend as a, if you have time, spend your time and go through these courses. They're very short courses. So again, that's the second option that's available in, um, under help. And I'm also going to um, send some admin um, training. I have an admin training document. You can use that as a resource. And I'm also going to upload this training video to YouTube. So you'll have it as an additional resource. And also, uh, if you have any questions about anything and need help with something, please reach out to me. I'm I'm not terribly busy. Usually I can find time to jump on a call with someone or answer a question via email or 
um, have a have a Zoom meeting if um, detailed training is required. Yeah, thank you. You're well, the other, the other thing was uh, you mentioned PDFs, but we can also attach uh, PowerPoints and Word documents, I guess, uh, in the for, for training, that is. Yeah, you just want to make sure that um, your audience is capable of opening the document. So if, for example, you're delivering something and a user is using an Android device, PowerPoint might not be on that Android device. So um, the PDF would probably be easier to distribute. Yeah, I got you. Dusty. Mm -hmm. Bill here. So I'm just wondering for uh, all the courses that you have already, is there assessments for all those courses or do we have to create them? All of our courses already have exams built in. So you don't have to worry about um, creating assessments or, or knowledge checks for any of the training that's already in the system. And by the way, that um, I just wanted to see if you wanted me to enable self-enrollment for all of the training. The, the only thing I caution about that is that there are a lot of thermal plant courses. I would make those available too, is that correct? Well, if there are courses that you don't want available, I can um, leave those out. It, it, it's up to Bill, but I just want to just want to verify if, that, if that's what you mean by all all courses available. We can, uh, Dusty. We'll just leave it for now. We'll touch base and we uh, talk with the rest of the rest of the team and come up with uh, kind of a make sure that we're all on the same page going forward, so that we have a curriculum and everything else going forward that uh, everybody's happy with and. And I'll reach out to you. Okay. Um, that was my other question I did have for you. The 84 people that have been enrolled, has uh, an email been sent out to them about username and password? No, there has not. And I'm glad you asked that because that's one thing that I forgot to show you. Um, so if you select one user, and this is an individual user and a multi-user task, if you click the, if you select the users, and by the way, I do want to note that um, there are going to be certain, I think this is probably set to a default of 20. So if you change this to 100, um, then all of your users are going to display on the page. And then you can save this to a report. And then, so anytime you come to this page, all your users are going to be shown. So right now it says, one out of 85 out of 85. By default, this is gonna limit yourself to 20. The reason why I'm telling you this is because if you select a bunch of users on one page and then click next, it's going to uh, wipe away what you selected on the previous page. So if you view all your users on the one page and you can select all these users, and if you wanna select all the users, um, click select this page and all your users will be selected. And if we click this reset password button on the right, we'll have two options. We have send uh, password reset message and also new user message. This is going to be the new user email that will be sent out to your users. And you can edit this information. So for example, my name is in here. If you want to change this to your name and manually put your company name and email and phone number in here, um, please do. Um, so anytime you come to this page, you'll have to make those changes again. Um, this is the system, system default template for this page. So this is going to send the user, it's going to send an email, first name and last name, and a reset password link. It'll have a link to the LMS and it will show what their username is. I don't typically set this up or initiate these in the beginning because um, whenever users are going to the system, um, you want to make sure that they have the training assigned to them before you send out information on how to log in. Because sometimes if a user logs in, they don't see their training, then they'll leave. 
So that's the only reason why I have not sent an email out to your users. Did that answer your question? Was that okay? Yep. Are there any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go ahead and end this call. So, uh, just to follow up, I am going.